Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. Well, this year clearly has been, uh, the, the, we have seen curves on imports and exports of various agri-commodities as India tackled the rising inflation and unseasonal rains. The new year kicking in, experts continue to be cautious on a host of factors that could impact the supply and demand of food. These include the Lok Sabha polls in India, geopolitical conflicts like Russia-Ukraine war and Israel-Hamas war. The government stocks and monsoons is going to be yet another thing that the markets will keep a focus on. That's exactly what we are going to be discussing on today's show on the outlook for the agricultural landscape and its growth trajectory for 2024. To discuss the key facts to watch out for, I am now joined by Sumit Gupta. He's CEO at McDonald's Pels Global Commodities. Sumit, hi, a very happy new year to you and we hope things improve into this year. But as I was saying, you know, 2023 was marred by weather, war and then huge volatile moves that we saw in case of agriculture commodities. How would you look at a, a spillover of all of that in this year as well? And where are the major concerns now? Hi, Manisha. Good afternoon and very happy new year and a warm welcome from Paul Delhi. Uh, Manisha, your questions are very pertinent because uh, we are a country of 1.4 billion people. And for government of India, the biggest concern, especially is food inflation. And uh, considering that we are getting into general election in 2024, food inflation becomes even more important topic. Mm. If you look at the history of uh, Indian election, no government has won election when they are fighting the food inflation. And that is where government of India has taken a lot of steps, as you have mentioned, in 2023, which entails a uh, uh, ban of exports, uh, allowing imports of pulses till 2025, government is trying to take a lot of timely steps. And specifically, when you mentioned about the geopolitical aspect, uh, it is a bit of concern because whenever uh, there is nationalism or the war breaks out, actually it is inflationary world over because the supply chain tends to be shorter. And only two years back, we were talking about the surpluses in India. Mm. We tried surplus and we were talking about how to tackle with them. And in two years, because of not so good weather and monsoon, we have seen our ripe wheat stocks coming down to as low as 7.5 million tons last year on 1st of April. And we will be touching almost the same number this year. And this is a matter of concern for government of India because uh, uh, we have to take care of large population base. And that is where we believe the food inflation is going to continue and government will have to continue to take a lot of steps to take it. Absolutely. So, Sumit, while we are looking at the rabi harvest to come in for the month of March, and that's going to be a crucial one as well, where do you see major concerns? Because as of now, we have these uh, government measures in place, whether it's for sugar, rice, wheat, edible oils, pulses for that matter. Where do you see situation improving as we move ahead? It's an excellent question because uh, government can only make policy and farmers farm. And the rest all depends on the nature, weather, and uh, developing factors. If you if you look at the current acreages, India's pulses, pulses acreages is uh, still trading. And government of India has taken excellent step of letting yellow peas imports in. Why? Because it has given a signal to Canadian farmer to plant yellow peas next year for Indian markets. Now, looking at Indian markets, if you see, uh, it is not. It is also about how the subsoil moisture is panning out. You have to see where we are dropping acreages in wheat and uh, pulses because these are the two main products which are of biggest concern for government of india and if we look at the wheat acreages uh, uh, which on 28th of december is trading by almost two percent and chana acreages which are trading by 10 percent that means even if we get a model yield or the best of yield uh, even then, will not be having a bumper harvest. Mm. What does it mean? It means government of India will have to continue with their stock limits and other restrictive measures into the into the harvest, uh, so that government can procure more wheat uh, for the buffer norms for the stocks and distribution, and uh, chickpeas uh, procurement for government of India will be a challenge. And that's where you might see government of India continuing with relaxed import policies on the pulses side. Okay. And, yeah. Hmm. Uh, you know, the other thing clearly is about uh, uh, ethanol and biofuel, and we've seen some concerns come in on that side as well. So whether it's about maize, sugar, rice, how would you read this segment? Interesting question, because uh, uh, it's been said, if you want to become a billionaire in India, become a millionaire, put up a feed plant, 
And if you want to become a millionaire, become a billionaire and put an ethanol plant. Mm. Because in a food and fuel debate in a country like India, it is the food which will always win over fuel. And most of the policies which government of India has made keeping ethanol sector in mind, they were made during the years between 2018 and 21 when we were grappling with food surpluses. And in current context, especially if you look at the commodities from which we can make uh, ethanol, that is broken rice, maize, and sugar, uh, leaving sugar aside, if you look at the grain complex, both rice and maize prices are, uh, have rallied significantly over previous year, which is giving good realization, one, on the, uh, to the farmer, but it also making the industry on the starch and the poultry side difficult to procure maize. And that is where we believe uh, going forward, looking at the food, Availability and uh, and the mons and the weather and the temperature production uh, projection in north of India, which is not very friendly, mm. as IMU has also highlighted, we might see uh, that the grain into fuel will become inflationary, and government will not take such a positive view on that situation going forward. Absolutely. So, uh, so with the final question, so when we look at prices for many of these commodities, I mean, as you mentioned, that uh, the government has taken measures, will continue to hold them into this year as well. Where is your major concern? I mean, you've said pulses and wheat. Uh, do you think the prices here could rise further? And uh, wh how, how are you looking at the prices across the sector? I will say price is a result. And what we have to see that how, because India is a growing economy. We are at a juncture at which where China was somewhere between 2008-10. And for India to keep on growing, we need two things. One, our food demand is going to grow exponentially, and that's where supply also needs to be continuously increased, either through domestic measure or we have to plan for our protein and grain availability for domestic requirements going forward, either through imports. Number two, my major concern will be how government take futuristic action so that food availability in the country remains ample without impacting farmers' interests. Mm -hmm. And that is where coming to the question of prices, we believe food inflation in India is here to stay. The, uh, all of us have to adjust to the new normal because we have already exhausted most of our stockpiles. And it takes time to build uh, 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 stocks. And we need benign weather in monsoon of 2024. And we know El Nino is continuing, which is not very friendly Indian monsoon usually. So government of India has a very, very uh, uh, difficult path to uh, to tread going forward. And we are going to see a lot of intervention to control food inflation in future too. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, that's a lot of uh, exhaustive conversation really coming in for the Indian inflation there. And very well said that fuel always food rather will always be above fuel and the inflationary concerns still have not eased in India. So there's a lot to watch out for in the harvest season that is going to be in the month of March. But that, that's exactly the point that Sumit was making that you need to watch out for a couple of crops, especially like wheat and uh, pulses. To have further discussion on wheat now, let's go across to Ajay Goel. He's director at Shivaji Flour Mills. Uh, Ajay, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yes, there are concerns when it comes to wheat. And in 2023, the government has tried to ensure that there's enough wheat into the market with their measures. The exports are banned. When you look back at the year on the various measures that the government took, what's your sense on how much have they worked? So 2023 was a little unusual year because, you know, initial government estimates, the first and the second, were very optimistic. But as it turned out, you know, it was not that great. The crop, the crop was probably 5 to 10 percent lower than most estimates uh, that had come out. And that put the entire market and the government in a bit of a spot. And because of that, the government had to tighten uh, the entire supply chain and uh, step in with an early OMSS uh, so that markets could be contained. And there was also some sort of a supply uh, surety for the markets. Uh, so I think it is uh, always the over-optimistic uh, uh, projections that uh, come out sometimes that uh, really misguide the markets. And there was a lot of hope of import opening up so that, you know, we could have an additional four or five million tons, which we had actually exported the previous year. And, you know, we could uh, replenish that. But the government had other things in mind and they kept pushing the can as far as they could so that, uh, you know, there was no imports. And it, they seem to have managed it quite well with a lot of nervousness in the market.
<laughs> Ajay, you mentioned about the import duty and yes, all of last year and many conversations that we had with you also, there was a suggestion that the import duty could be brought down. That hasn't happened. Do you see that happen in this year now? Uh, so I think the larger concern is that we might actually be dipping into our buffer and, uh, you know, next year if we have a similar situation, you know, uh, so the buffer becomes very critical. So we, what we need as a nation is uh, rebuilding the buffer, you know. So we were in a very comfortable situation two years ago, far about three times a buffer, four times a buffer would be the opening stock. But this time we are just uh, uh, going to end uh, with somewhere around the buffer. So the larger concern is about the buffer. And I think there has to be a way out to replenish uh, the additional buffer that is required in our country. <laughs> I'm sure the government would not want to see those numbers there. But 2024 also is an election year. Would you expect the government to do everything right, wheat being an essential commodity, going forward with the free food distribution as well? How do you look at the supply situation? Also, the supply situation is going to be critical uh, in the coming year. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will have to get in some additional uh, wheat into the system. Uh, so that there's no nervousness in the markets. And, you know, when uh, the market knows that, you know, we are just about there, you know, and so there's a lot of speculative activity, which is not really healthy for the markets. And uh, I think uh, this year we should just scrape through and the government will definitely be forced to think about uh, how to augment ex additional supplies into the system. And that will be up to the government. So the larger problem is the government is trying to please everybody. The farmer, you know, we do not know what a reasonable price is for the farmer, for the consumer. And the trade in between, you know, gets uh, uh, grounded in the center. Because uh, when the prices are high, uh, the government is happy that the farmer is getting a good price, but the consumer is not happy. So the, it is that, uh, you know, absolute number, which is the right number, which the trade doesn't know. And only the government knows. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, Ajay, also, how would you rate the government's open sales scheme? Uh, we do understand that uh, we did see lower uh, sales into the market, and that has kept the prices on the higher side. But how what, and what shape can the scheme take going forward? So the scheme is a well-structured scheme. And, uh, of course, the government doesn't uh, open up it, its gates, you know, for anyone and everyone to come and take as much as they want. They keep giving small doses, but it could be rationalized further into, uh, you know, ensuring that most of the regions where there's a good demand, there is sufficient stock, sufficient up for tender, and uh, people with higher capacity also are able to draw a little more. Because, uh, you know, somebody is getting 80% of his capacity under the scheme and somebody gets like 10 or 20% of his capacity. So that is a bit of an anomaly. And if the government rectifies that moving forward, things could look better in the OMSs. Mm. How would you also look at the global situation right now? We did see the wheat prices run up. Uh, this is also after India restricted its exports. How do you read the prices now, which have come off by nearly 25 to 30% from its highs? In the past two years, I think the geopolitical situation and up to an extent, the weather is always playing a part. And uh, so it is uh, no longer a freely tradable commodity as every, uh, everybody in the world is wanting to build some sort of a strategic stock on and off. And uh, that's and of course, we have spread out harvests uh, in various parts of the world and the market is uh, dynamic. But the supply situation globally is at ease. There is no great concern. Mm -hmm. With all of that as a background, how would you look at the wheat prices outlook for 2024? So it's become a, a big political, uh, uh, it's no longer uh, free, free, free trade any longer. And uh, there are uh, watermarks and benchmarks for everything. And month by month, uh, I think uh, somebody is reviewing things and somebody else is deciding where the market should be. But I think uh, it should be a smooth run uh, uh, moving forward uh, with the government taking charge. And uh, they will be having most of the stock in the uh, new uh, next uh, a crop year as well. So I think they will be dictating where the market should be at. I hear you when you say that the wheat is not a free market with government in charge there, but I'm going to still push you for a number because we did see an all-time high in wheat in last year. What's your sense on the range this year? So I think we could uh, trade in a range from 25 to 30 uh, ex Delhi uh, in the coming year, and that should be uh, about the uh, range we should be in, I guess. 
All right. Ajay, thank you so much for joining us. Wishing you a great 2024. Thank you for uh, giving us that price view and sense, of course, in that essential commodity. But with that, we'll head into a short break. But coming up, 